ICNERP, EMF, and a few questions I've been asked over the last few months, in particular over the last couple of weeks since the Ofcom email went out advising license holders that they need to look at making sure they know the exclusion zone or the safety limit of EMF exposure around the antenna that they might be using. But a few questions keep coming up. And number one, I think I'm going to start with the one that, that harasses me most is, will I have to give up ham radio now? And the answer to that one is no, you're not going to have to give up ham radio. Just so that we can put this in perspective, if you've got a typical setup, let's just say you've got a 100 watt radio, you operate SSB, and you've got a G5 um, RV up in your in your garden. This is not an uncommon setup. 100 watts SSB, three minutes in six. SSB has a duty cycle of about 20% or so. We're using um, Westflex 103. 100 watts out of the radio on SSB will comply because of the the gain of the antenna, the losses in the coax, the fact that you're transmitting only three minutes in six, and the SSB has a 20% duty cycle. By the time you've done all those calculations, using the RSGB calculator, it gives you the distance that you need to comply. It just says comply, you don't need to worry about it. Record the data. In a, in a document for each of the bands that you want to operate on or you, you do operate on and then just save it somewhere safe put it as a save it as a pdf or a, or a file another question same thing will i have to give up radio but in this case will i have to give up ft8 because data modes typically are 100 percent duty cycle or a much higher duty cycle and the answer to that one is no a typical 100 watt radio really you should be transmitting no more than the am rating for that particular set so for instance if you've got um i don't know it might be an 897 100 watts typically it's 25 watts max on data modes or am so if you were to transmit 25 watts of ft8 in the same setup into some uh, Westflex 103, into a G5RV, which is not, again, not an uncommon setup, you would pretty much comply. Um, you would comply, um, but obviously do do check it for yourself because it may vary, you know, the results may vary between users, but you will comply, I'm pretty sure. All the, set, all the tests I've just done have, have uh, come back as, in green as comply. Record the data, Stick it with your license, job done. You've you've done it, that's all you need to do. So again, I just I want to get out there. Please, you know, don't don't worry about this. This is really, really very little to worry about. Now that brings me on very quickly is to the next question that which is being asked is why? Why now? Why us? Um and that one's quite an interesting one because um you know it's a bit like car seat belts isn't it really when they were introduced people were going oh, i don't want to wear a seat belt um and now we get in a car it's just second nature similar thing you know they, they've as safety data becomes uh, more and more you know available and we become more aware of of um, maybe harm we're causing to neighbors ourselves you know or our families or whatever then we really do need to take that into account. And this is just one way of making us aware. Now, at the moment, we're running on um, the ICNERP 1998 um, regs. There is some 2020 regs in the um, in, in the sort of uh, in the future, which will be coming. But unfortunately, there is some some detail that they're trying to work out I'm, I'm fairly confident and it, it boils around the limb currents as i'm as i understand it so 
that is yet to come and I think that one is percentage of TX in 30 minutes so that there are some things that get better for us but there are some things that may become worse in the future we're also going to need to take into account anything under 10 megs um, that one might be you know that one might be quite awkward for a lot of people um, the next question that I'm asked quite a lot is whereabouts on the antenna do I measure from? And this one's quite complicated. I'll start with a vertical. Okay, now a vertical, I'm taking that you measure from the center of the, of the actual antenna. Now this is very basic. This may or may not be correct, but this is the information. This is how I'm interpreting the instruction from Ofcom or the data that they're asking us to calculate it seems logical to measure from the center of the antenna or the nearest or lowest point of the radiating element. Now I'm going to try and explain a bit more on that one. If you have got a vertical and it has a raised counterpoise that it could be classed as a radiating element and you would have to measure almost certainly from the end. So you would have to then add on the length of the counterpoise, basically. Because it's raised, it would be a radiating element. However, if it is submerged below ground or at ground level, you know, staked into the ground, then that is a non-transmitting element, typically. Again, I'm, I'm not an expert on this. You know, aerials may vary. You will have to do your own sort of due diligence and uh, work this out for yourself. Perhaps actually DX Commander or Peter Waters will do one of their videos explaining, you know, a bit about these um, these types of aerials. And yeah, so we'll 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 see, you know, in, in the future, people that know a little bit more about these things um, explain uh, explain that. But so you do take that in, into consideration. If it's raised, you're probably going to have to measure from the from the end and add on the, the counterpoise length, um, which could be quite a long way. Um, but typically, if they're grounded, you're going to measure from the, the center line of the antenna um, or the nearest point of the, the, the radiating element the center. And the same thing with a wire. So if you've got a, an, um, an inverted V, it would be the lowest point, so you would need to be your your um, your exclusion zone would be near those two points. But again, if you've got a G5 RV, like I said earlier on, 100 watts in SSB into a G5 RV is typically is going to comply instantly, and the same with 25 watts of FT8 is going to comply instantly, typically. So yeah, so there you go. So measure from the lowest point or the nearest point of the radiating element and i think that is um, that is something to uh, to bear in mind don't forget that some wire antennas will have a feed line ladder line or whatever that may also radiate so you need to take that into account again like i said not an expert on these things don't take my word for it this is how I'm interpreting it and I'm just discussing, I'm just emptying my mind uh, talking to you guys about this. So just trying to help put people's mind uh, at rest. Um, next question I'm asked, uh, there are a few, um, is what about mobile? Well, we talked about earlier on about three minutes or, or uh, your TX time in six. So if you're you know, going down a, a, an A road or something, passing people on the on the pavement, then the amount of exposure they get in six minutes is negligible. So it doesn't matter. It starts to get a little bit more complicated with passengers in the car. I think we'd have to consult, again, someone that specialises, you know, in installing maybe professional, um, you know, radio, two-way radio in, in, in the vehicles. That would be very interesting to hear their thoughts on that. I don't know about that. Um, but, you know, mobile, you know, if you take the six minute um, part of the um, of the regulations or even in 2020, the 30 minute uh, part of the regulations, it's going to be negligible if you're driving down a street. It may become a bit more of, a, of an issue if you're parked up in a, in a public car park 
or if you are you know maybe going down and you know driving through a, a, a high street or a built-up area with a traffic jam um that may then suddenly become more you know more important again you you just need to record that you you've got this particular kit and you're going to operate this particular way and just record it for your you know just for your own sort of safety um the next question I'm asked is what about my tower? Now this one is a really huge challenge because obviously typically people with a tower have got a Yagi on the top. Now, if you've got, you know, quite often these stations are quite seasoned stations, you know, they might be, um, they might be, you know, big DX stations or, or whatever. They're going to almost certainly be using 400 Watts. The typical, exclusion zone on those sorts of things can be 22 plus meters um you know it could be 30 meters so you need to make sure well i was told that that these things are normally modeled with a well, 3d football on the end of say the yagi which is going to be we'll say it's 20 meters exclusion zone so that's a 20 meter radius around a three-dimensional football so that would be a 40 meter diameter football on the end of the of the yagi if you could imagine that just imaginary see-through virtual football on the end of it so you would need to have that yagi would need to be at least 22 meters plus two meters the height of a person from the ground at any point that someone could get to it but then it would also need to be at least 20 meters away from any building or you know with public in it that you can't control and again you know uh, this is i mean people that are going to have towers are probably going to have a lot more land than i have i'm not going to be putting a tower up in my garden so there you go so that's an interesting one um the other question um what about cb um you know is you know this is they don't have to, to comply because they don't have a license. Actually, they do have to comply. If, um, but the thing is, it complies by default. And because they're typically less than 20 watts. And we said earlier on that if you've got sort of something like, a, in, in fact, if, you, if you've got, in this particular case, it's normally something like a quarter wave vertical or something like that. If you do the calculations, they can com they comply by default because they're they're running less than twenty watts, and by the time you've done the the calculation of how many minutes TX in six, then again, it works out that they'll be in compliance anyway. The only thing they should really do is to record the data just to say that you know they've done the calculation and this is what they've come up with. So they do need to comply, as do PMR users. But the thing is. They comply by default because it's 500 milliwatts um, and you're not allowed to use, are you allowed to, you're not allowed to use a base station or anything like that. So they comply. Um, I had a phone call today from a guy that, um, that had a, um, a, a boat. I'll just say it's a boat. And he was asking about compliance with the passengers on the boat because the aerial needed to be at a particular position because of, you know, where they go and the aerial couldn't really be put anywhere else but the type of antenna and the fact that he was running minimal power by the time you'd done the calculation he complied because he didn't exceed the the 10 watts eirp um transmitted so again you know there's there's lots of every everyone has been affected by this the other one is um, how do I record this and um, we don't need a log anymore so how do I record it well what you need to do is you need to record the data that you've um, you know taken from the, the those expert Excel spreadsheets and you need to put it in I would put it in some columns um, just to each of the bands and then put down the exclusion zone and and the fact that you either can comply or you don't and you know the power in power out whatever it comes up on that that sheet record it or if you want to if you're lucky enough to be able to use excel um, or open office or whatever an online editor 
then you might be able to print the Excel spreadsheet itself for each of the bands. So you just calculate it. The RSGB one's pretty good, actually. Um, you can do that. Excel spreadsheets can be a real pain in the bum um, to print, but, you know, I'm sure you'll work it out. So once you've got that, just print it out, record it, whatever you need to do, and then just put it with a copy of your license. Tuck it away in a drawer. You're done. OK, that's it. You're done. Um, just a bit of a, a bit of a sum up. Um, you know, chin up, it's not as bad as, as it sounds. I think that's what I want you to take away from this. I think it's a good thing. I think this is going to be, you know, helpful for us going forward. I think we've really got to show due diligence and the fact that actually, because we're, we're amateur radio users and we've, you know, we've done exams and all that sort of stuff, we really should be able to handle something simple like this. I've had a few people say to me, you know, why Excel? Um, it's a real, it's a pain in the bum. Yes, I know it's a pain in the bum. Um, and, you know, some people don't have Excel. They don't have Microsoft Office or they don't have Open Office and they don't want them <laughs> either. I mean, I've spoken to one guy, I think, in the week who was so upset and uh, he said he's never used Excel spreadsheet in his life and he was really taken back that he had to do it. And I just said to him, you know, well, it's really, really straightforward. You know, 100 watts is typically, you know, if you don't, if it's uh, if 100 watts of FT8 is 3.4 metres, 150 watts of SSB is 3.4 metres. You just need to, you know, do some pretty, you know, run of the mill sort of calculations or ask someone to do it for you. Where do I think this is, this should go? Um, I personally would want to see the the calculations baked into the Ofcom website in your license portal so that we can put in the, the mode type and so it calculates um, the duty cycle and the fact that you'll only be transmitting for two minutes in six or whatever. It does all the pre-calculations and then when you hit save, it then fires it all out to a PDF which records it for each of the bands and then get saved with your license on your Ofcom portal. That is where it should be going, okay? None of this Excel spreadsheet malarkey. That is all garbage. Pieces of paper running around the place. It's all garbage. It should be going to the Ofcom portal where your license is held. You know, that is what I would want to see. I want to see it baked into the Ofcom website with all of the, that detail in it so we can be granular. We can tell it that we're using SSB. We can tell it that we're using for four minutes. We can tell it this is the loss on that particular cable. So a bit like with the, the RSGB Excel spreadsheet, but it needs to be baked into your license portal on, on Ofcom. Um, do I think this is going to get worse? Um, I think I think we're going to see some some interesting results from under 10 megs. Um, I would look forward to sort of seeing that going forward, um, just to sort of see what this is, where this is going to end up. Um, so the other thing is as well with the limb currents. I think that's going to get a little bit technical as well. Um, I would like to see. I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to work that out. Now I know that there are a few guys from the RSGB and other places that are working hard to try and get this sorted out um, as best they can. Um, I think the the calculators will get better and there is a, there are a few actually on the on the web and that I would recommend you playing with. One of them is called um, Watt Watcher. Um, that one is spelt funny. That one is, is a German program and it produces the PDF documents, the certificates in, in German. Um, so I hope one day that they'll do an English version of it and or I hope that someone will talk to them about it. Um, and that is uh, W-A-T-T-W-A-E-C-H-T-E-R. OK, and that is what watcher. Um, the other one is another little free um, to use program, which is called Ichnerp Calc. Um, again, that is really, really good as well. So um, I recommend those two programs. So you can go to um, to Ofcom. And they've got an, uh, an online calculator, but don't forget you've got to do your own pre-calculations for that. So you need to work out your duty cycle 
and the time that you're TX in six. The RSGB one does all that for you and you can put your name and all that sort of stuff, the type of radio, the power, and it will do all the pre-calculations and then do you give you the exclusion zone, the heights, the, the distances away. You can set all sorts of things up in that and then you can print that out or record the data. It's entirely up to you. So again, chin up, not as bad as it uh, kind of makes out. This is a bit of a palaver, I know, but do you know what? We'll get used to it. So thank you for watching. I do hope this has made you feel a bit better. See you soon.